Apple is massively responsible for the invention of the terms UX and UI design and for the invention of the first popular user interface design. Something that we all use today to be a rare new thing in the world. So let's take a look at a short deep dive on how Apple invented UX and UI design. So the story doesn't even begin at Apple. The story begins way before Apple even came into business. This is a time where Xerox was a major IT company and it was ruling the world. Back in 1970s, they introduced something called GUI, GUI, which is short for Graphical User Interface. The invention of GUI was actually solving a problem that already existed. The DOS operating system, also often called as MS-DOS, was a text-based operating system. That means to open a simple file, you had to give a command, which was like typing on a writing in code. This was fine for professionals working in an office or an accountant, but for the daily user like you and I, who are sitting at home, just want to browse the internet, this was definitely not the way to go. So researchers at Xerox Park decided that they had to come up with a good solution for the general public so that the personal computer could truly become personal. So from the ideas based of one innovator called Douglas Engelbart or Engelbart, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, made a concept of a digital interface that could give these commands or these text-based commands without even typing. It's like clicking on a button on a screen to do something. Based on this concept, the first ever personal computer was developed called the Xerox Alto or Alto. I'll put a screenshot of how the user interface looked. But this was a huge leap because, you know, people were typing in commands. Now they could just click on a folder to open files and open the files and read it. But as a lot of other new things even today are, this was a huge prop because of the price tag. Only 2,000 of these were sold because they priced it at today's money of $100,000. Imagine spending $100,000, which is like 70 lakh rupees on one computer. That's crazy. But this little commercial that they made truly solidified the concept of a mouse-based, cursor-based operating system where you could just point, click, open a file, drag things around, and this was the next revolution in design. Now, this is where finally Apple stepped in and they would revolutionize the user interface forever. So there is this sort of a legend, a, a mythical story, if you may. Uh, they say that Steve Jobs once visited Xerox Park and he offered something like 100,000 shares in the newly built Apple company in exchange for research, data, and the designs that they created for the GUI. And another legend is that after Steve Jobs visited the campus, a lot of people at Xerox started leaving Xerox and shifting to companies like Apple and Microsoft at the time. Now, just a few years after, in 1984, Apple released its first Mac OS, which wasn't even called Mac OS back in the day. It was called Macintosh System 1. And this was simply amazing, not because of the UI, but the device it was put on was roughly $2,500 back in the day, which today would cost somewhere around $5,000. But this was significantly cheaper from Xerox's old $100,000 machines. And thanks to the amazing marketing that Apple is very known for, they were able to sell 250,000 plus computers that year. Thanks to this popularity of these new systems, the operating system, which was based around the GUI, which I'll share some pictures of, was finally catching fire. People liked this new approach of being able to interact with a nice little mouse, click anything on screen, not having these complicated text-based commands, and finally being able to use something at home for personal use. Next year, Windows launched their Windows 1.0, which was extremely close to System OS 1. Steve Jobs said this was Apple's original work and nobody else can copy it. And there was, of course, lawsuits between both these companies, but Microsoft won. But thankfully, the court says, just because an application or software looks like yours, you cannot put a lawsuit on it. And because of this, other companies followed suit. They started copying Apple and Microsoft's GUI. So in a way, Apple and Microsoft jointly invented UI design through these UI design operating systems as we know today. Now, while all this was really good, Apple needed somebody who could improve their user interfaces, find out how users use these personal computers and bring better products, services to people. So in the early 90s, Apple hired the great Donald Norman, who we proudly call as Don Norman, the father of UX design. If you haven't read his books or if you don't know who he is, 
Well, my friend, you need to read up. You need to get educated about this. He was a cognitive scientist who studied human behavior and how people react to different products and services. And he was given the role of user experience architect. And this was the first time in history that UX as a term was coined. And according to Don Norman himself, he started using the term user experience design or UX design more often because UX design encompasses everything that he was able to do in the company. Everything from designing the mouse to the display, to the industrial design, to the research, to the graphical work, physical hardware interactions, and everything around this. He said UX is an umbrella term, and that is something that even I say till date. And of course, they started hiring who? More UX designers. This as it does start catching up, in other companies as well, they realized Apple has this wonderful team who's designing interfaces, products, etc. So why not us? The next big step that Apple would make that would change design once again was Steve Jobs introducing design focused but user friendly products like the iPod and the first ever multi touch screen on the iPhone. The device like iPod was a new design. Nobody had ever seen or ever used something like that before. So knowing what button to press, how to interact with the circular dial in the middle, if there are touch controls or not, how to store, delete music albums, etc. All this was very new to people. People were used to cassette players and CD players by this time. So having to create user experiences that were new both on the physical and the software end was very difficult. But through proper marketing, design, tech, and of course the FOMO effect that the public had at the time, this became popular and people picked up this new format of listening to music. Later in the 2000s, Apple introduced the iPhone with a multi-touch display, which of course revolutionized the smartphone market once and for all. But apart from the hardware, the biggest thing that was really a big deal was the first app store which was launched soon after. People could install custom apps. If custom apps weren't a thing, half of the UX designers today wouldn't even have jobs today if it weren't for the custom app store where you can download custom apps, apps made by other companies except Apple. Apple was always a pioneer in making and popularizing cool new products. Something that companies like Xerox and even IBM and Microsoft used to fail at Apple really stepped forward, popularized terms like UX and UI design, and even popularized a lot of tech people wouldn't have accepted back in the day. On screen, you'll see a cool video that you guys should watch next. Something that I've selected that you guys would be interested in. Go check this out. Also, leave a thumbs up if you like this video and all the other videos that I post. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Until next time, take care. God bless.